Do you have someone in your life that's difficult to deal with, a sandpaper person, uh, an in-law or outlaw? Uh, tune into today's broadcast and we're going to communicate with you how to draw on God's grace and manifest Jesus to that difficult person. Welcome to Wisdom for Living with Greg Moore. Join with Greg as he shares truth from the Word of God that will help you grow in wisdom and successfully navigate a balanced life with family, marriage, finances, and relationships. And now, here's Greg. Well, welcome to today's broadcast of Wisdom for Living. Uh, man, wherever you're watching from, uh, man, it's, it, whether you're, whether you're uh, watching on, online, whether you're watching uh, you know, by one of our television stations that we're on, and I, I just want to welcome you to the Wisdom for Living viewing family. Uh, this, this is a family. We care about you. We care about your welfare. We care about your success, your health. Uh, our vision for uh, my ministry is to simply help you to grow in wisdom, uh, help you to grow in Christ likeness, and help you to grow in God's grace. And I'm excited about uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we're going to be begin to begin to talk about a series about a heart established in grace. But uh, if you need prayer for anything, uh, something's going on in your life, we'd love to agree with you, uh, speak the word of God over you, uh, give you uh, give you the word of God. Uh, you can just uh, you can just email us at, at prayer at gregmore.com. We'd love to uh, connect with you uh, and and just believe God with you. So uh, uh, we're going to begin in, in Hebrews 13 today, but before uh, I do that, I want to uh, uh, tell you a funny, that's kind of the trademark or, or, or brand for my ministry. I uh, actually started doing this when I pastored uh, in uh, North Texas several years ago, and we, we had... Uh, I'd heard this uh, joke and uh, I shared it. And we had a couple of men who their wives had been praying for them and they came to church that Sunday and they heard the joke that I shared and, and uh, they received from the Lord. One of them got saved, one of them came back to the Lord and they said, man, that guy's funny. So uh, they, their, their wives came back and told me about it. And I, I said, man, if that's gonna draw people uh, to the Lord, if there's an attraction there, then I'm going to uh, use that. And so, so uh, we, 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 I just began. People begin to sell, send me funnies. In fact, you can send, you can send it. Uh, you can go online, gregmore.com, and send me your funnies. And if I if I laugh uh, at them, I may use them, or uh, I may, uh, I, I can even clean some of them up. <laughs> Praise God. So this is called reg, redneck medical terms. So th these, are, these are medical terms that rednecks interpreted. So uh, be nine. It's what you be after you be eight. <laughs> Bacteria. The back door to the cafeteria. <laughs> Barium. It's what you do with dead people. <laughs> Caesarean section. A neighborhood in Rome. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Cat scan, searching for the cat. <laughs> Caught her eyes, made eye contact with her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Caught her eyes. <laughs> Coma, a punctuation mark. <laughs> oh man, I'm crying here. D and C, where what? Where what? Where Washington is. <laughs> Oh, dilate, to live longer than your kids, <laughs> than your kids do. <laughs> oh, forgive me, I'm crying. <laughs> it's too funny. Fibula, a small white lie. <laughs> and uh, finally, seizure, <laughs> a Roman emperor who lived in the Caesarean section. <laughs> Oh man, this is funny. That is funny. I don't care who you are. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, for, forgive me. I'm gonna cry down my face here. So, 
You know, we look, you need to you need to learn to lighten up, my brother and sister. You need to just learn to laugh and enjoy life. You know, we can be serious about God, but but we need to be not so serious about ourselves and just learn learn to uh, enjoy life and and laugh, praise God. So, uh we we're going to begin uh a brand new series today. Uh, and we're going to re- begin reading in Hebrews 13 and verse 9. It says, Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines. So he's communicating to us about how to stay away from false teaching, from heresy, from errors, and so on. And he gives us the remedy for that. For it is good that the heart be established by grace not with foods which have not profited those who've been occupied with them. And so, you know, he's just saying, look, it's all right to eat healthy, but but don't make a religion out of it. And and don't uh, condemn people for what they're eating, uh, what they're drinking. And he's saying, look, you're going to get it. You're going to get into false doctrine, false teaching, heresy, if your heart's not established in grace. And so that's what this series is about uh, my heart is to help you uh, have a heart that is established by grace and established in grace. I, you know, I for a, for a long period of time I, I learned the message of faith. I and and I still walk in faith. Praise God. And I and I don't haven't thrown the baby out with the bathwater. But some of my friends who who went to the same Bible college that I did and taught on faith, they got into faith legalism where they started to, you know, just confess for uh, whatever things that their flesh uh, wanted. They were using the scripture to try to accomplish their own purposes. And, you know, you've probably seen, you know, or, or been aware of some people that have, that have done that. And I, I just, it just didn't bear witness with me. Um, and I, you know, I want the faith. The, our faith has got to be genuine, and our faith has got to be uh, a response to God's grace. And so I read this scripture here. He said he wants our hearts established in grace. And I just said, all right, Lord, uh, would you make that real to me? Would you help me get my heart established in grace, where I don't misuse faith, where I don't take the principles of faith? And apply them in a legalistic way, or a fleshly way, or uh, anything like that. And I want I want my heart established in, in your grace. And uh, and then the, God began to teach me, you know, that every every verse in the Bible, uh, Old Testament and New Testament, you and I have the ability to fulfill that if it's written to us. If it's if God's speaking to us, especially New Testament, then you and I have the ability to do that, even the responsibility scriptures. For example, Romans 12, 21, it says, don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with what some people say, more evil. (laughs) But that's not what the Bible says. It says, overcome evil with good. Well, you know, when somebody does evil to me, what, and when somebody does evil to you, what what is our flesh tendency? Well, we want to get even, or we want to we want to one up them, or 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 put you know put a hurt on them, or or talk about them, and yet the Bible says don't be overcome by that. And how do you, how can we not be overcome by when people do evil to us by overcoming evil with good, and Yet, I, you know, I look at that and I've had, you know, man, I had one time I was in, uh, at, just after I was uh, filled with the Spirit, born again in 1973, 1976, I was filled with the Spirit. And I had a, a competitor in my business that didn't bother me financially in terms of taking any business from me, but she was, man, she was... Uh, Causing all kinds of problems for my uh, for my uh, staff, for uh, you know, for people that that worked for me, uh, she would send her uh, her team and her staff at, at night uh, to 
uh, to key our vans or, or let the air out of the tires. In one case, they slashed the tires of one of our vans. And, and uh, if I finally had someone, you know, kind of stay around late at night and, and watch, and I found out that it was, you know, it was somebody that worked for her. And so I was contemplating, uh, I, I was contemplating uh, make, get, you know, make, getting even with her. I was actually contemplating how to take her out righteously. <laughs> and I don't mean her do her any bodily harm, but you know, I knew somebody who knew somebody <laughs> who could nuke her van <laughs> or one of her vans. And I was, I was really seriously considering this and, uh, you know, but, but then the Lord uh, took me to that verse in Romans 12, 21. And he said, didn't you, didn't you pray about and, and, and tell me you wanted to learn grace? And I said, yes, sir. He said, well, uh, that, that, what, is that, what does this verse tell you that to do when, when evil's done to you? And I said, well, it says to overcome evil with good. And he said, well, is nuking her her van is that, is that good and i said well no sir he said well you have grace you have my ability to fulfill that verse in your in your life and especially in this situation where that person was coming against me and and, and doing harm doing harm to my vans and and uh, damaging my you know tires on my vans and and causing problems with my staff and and so uh, I said, okay, all right, Lord, I, and this is where I, this is where I, my heart began to be established in grace. I said, all right, Lord, I yield to you and what, and to your ability. I can't do this in the natural because my, my natural man wants to, wants to blow one of her vans up. Seriously, that's what I was considering. Uh, that would be righteous, wouldn't it? Anyway, um, but I was young, okay. I, I was very young and I, and I was, you know, immature. But I, I'd committed to learn grace and the Lord said, well, what, would, what, what could you do that would be good for her? And I said, well, we're in the same business. We're in the flower business. And, and then I, I felt really strong, like the Lord spoke to me. I want you to buy her 2,000 of the best cut flowers, the best roses, the best carnations. And at that time, that was, that was about a thousand dollars. Okay. It would be today's, in today's market, it'd probably be, you know, four or five thousand dollars. And so, uh, in, in fact, it may have been closer to two thousand dollars. It was somewhere between a thousand and two thousand dollars. I said, all right, Lord, I, I, I yield to you and I draw on your ability to do this. And so, uh, I, I ordered, I picked up the phone. <laughs> See, I didn't, my flesh did not want to do that, but it, we're talking about a heart established in grace. And God taught me grace before I ever met Andrew Womack, who, who has a wonderful uh, ministry of grace and a balance of grace and faith. But God began to teach me grace by, by uh, just one of the example I'm sharing with you when I made that commitment, all right, Lord, whatever I, even a difficult verse, a responsibility verse in the Bible, I'm going to draw on your grace to do that, on your ability, not mine. Um, my, my ability uh, and my devices and scheme was to blow up her van, and, but God's, God's was to, to do good for her. So I ordered 2,000 of these flowers uh, that came in. I picked up the phone. And her name was Miss B, Mrs. B. And I said, Miss B, I, uh, you know, this is Greg Moore. And, and uh, we're both in the flower business. And I'd been in the business longer than her. And I said, you know, I know how it is to start a business and struggle. And, and uh, I've been there. And so, you know what? I just, I just wanted to bless you. And could you meet me? And then uh, we set up a meeting place in Northwest Houston. And uh, I want to give you some, I want to, I want to have a gift for you. And so uh, she came and we met at uh, this McDonald's uh, on, uh, on Highway 290 in Houston, Texas. And, and I pulled up and she had this big old 
guy with her, you know, that was going to her bodyguard, I guess. Cause, and then I backed up my van to her uh, van and I opened the back of the van and I said, now, you know, the Lord told me he wanted me to bless you and give you these flowers. And, and, I, and, the, and they were the best flowers that I could buy. They, they were the most expensive, the best flowers. And 2,000 of flowers, that, you know, there was a, there was a markup of, of five, sometimes 500% on, on, on cut flowers because they're perishable. And so she, you know, she stood to make quite a bit of money you know, on the on that uh, order that I, I mean, on that gift I gave her. So I, I opened it up and I opened up the boxes, and um, and they searched it. They want, I guess they were searching to see if there was a grenade or something in there. I don't know, but anyway, so I gave I gave them to her. I said, you know, I just I just want I was just praying for you, and I just wanted to bless you in your business, and uh, so God God bless you. Jesus loves you, and. Uh, Man, I, I, as I drove off, <laughs> we loaded them up in her, her van, and as I drove off, they were just standing there like this, both of them with their mouths wide open. And, you know, that was, um, it, it, that, that was a time when, uh, you know, I, I began to learn how to operate in grace, and what happened was I never had any more problems from her. Now, even if I did have more problems for her, I did. I drew on God's grace and ability uh, to to do what the, what the Word said to do that I didn't have the ability to do. You see, grace, my brother and sister, and and, and a heart established in grace is a heart and a life that's dependent upon the Lord. It's it's trusting in God rather than in your own ability. It's when you don't feel like you can do something. You, you say, all right, Lord, if you've assigned this to me or you've spoken this to me in the Word, my flesh doesn't want to do it. But instead of, in, in, instead of hope, uh, doing an arm's length thing and shirking back from that because you don't feel comfortable with it, you need to embrace that challenge. Embrace that opportunity and say, all right, Lord, in the natural I don't feel like loving this person. I don't feel like forgiving this person. I don't feel like doing good for this person. But Lord, this is your word and I'm going to draw on your ability to do it. And I'm telling you, friend, I, I absolutely, <laughs> I can tell you, I've, I've walked in this and lived in this and it really, really works. But it's a, it's a heart that's established in grace. It's a life that's given to you know, when God asks us to do something that seems impossible in the natural, all right, Lord, I'm just going to obey you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to give that large offering to that person, or I'm going to do that kind thing to that sandpaper person in my life. And instead of running from that situation, see, many of us, what we're doing is, is we're running from circumstances because they're difficult, they're uncomfortable, they're not, they're not easy in the natural, and we're just failing to draw on God's grace. That's the problem. It's a heart. You, you believe it conceptually, you believe it mentally, but you've not embraced this from a standpoint of, all right, Lord, in the natural, this is not what I want to do, but your word tells me to do it. Or the Lord prompts you in your heart to do a certain thing. Maybe it's to give a big offering to someone and you know it's really beyond your comfort zone. Well, listen, uh, every, if you approach giving like, you're, uh, like you own the money, then you'll never really steward it properly. If you're, if you're a steward of the money that God's given you, it's not yours. You just, you're there to manage it. And when, when God prompts you by uh, tell it, by giving you a, giving you joy toward a particular ministry or an individual, then you have the ability to do that. You have God's grace to do that. And what happened in this situation was after uh, I gave that those flowers to Miss B, uh, it wasn't too long after that, maybe uh, six months, nine months, I. I went to Bible college and I turned my business over to someone else. And uh, three years later, 
I was back in Houston. I was actually pastoring a church at the, then at the time, and I was filling up my car with gas, and I heard some tires squeal in the pull in the uh, in the gas station uh, parking lot, and then I looked to I looked over there to my right, and there was Miss B jumping out of her truck, leaving the truck running, and the and the and the truck door driver's door open and she came and ran and and on on the asphalt or concrete I forget what it was parking lot there while I was pumping gas she knelt down and grabbed my legs and said oh Mr. Greg Mr. Greg pr please pray for me my husband's in the hospital they're considering amputating his legs and pray for me and I guess he had diabetes or something you know and and well, I, you know, I led her in a sinner's prayer, though I think maybe she w was born again, but not really living for the Lord. But I and I prayed for her husband. Well, look, listen, guys, that would have happened if I would have nuked her van, right? <laughs> no, no. You know why that happened? Because I learned how to draw on God's grace. And I'm telling you, uh, and I'm just sensing really strong right now. Uh, with the with the wisdom for living viewing family that there's a difficult person in your life there's a sandpaper person somebody is really getting under your skin or it could be a mother-in-law it could be uh, you know it could be a neighbor or maybe it's someone at church or at school that's really really grates on you and the Bible says those that are doing evil to you overcome evil with good Jesus said pray for those that despitefully use you and, and abuse you and, and everything. And we want to complain and burn up the phone lines. But, but look, what, what he's after in, in Hebrews 13 here is he, he's after a heart established in grace. And I learned grace not on a logical, cerebral level. I learned it in, in my daily life and, and in difficult situations that I was in. You know, you're somebody who's watching. You're having very, you're having a lot of difficulty with a work situation, and you're praying that God will get you out of that work environment. And Jesus is interceding at the right hand of the Father that He can get Himself into that environment through you, and it's going to be His grace to do that. You know, that person that's difficult. Why don't you just? do like I did and just say, Lord, you know, I'm, I can't do these things in my strength. Even New Testament verses, I can't, I can't live this by myself. I can't do this by the strength of my will or, or anything. I, I, I just look at this and, you know, overcome evil with good? No way. But Lord, you, you told me to do it. So with the command comes the ability to perform it if we'll draw on His grace. And the good news is Jesus is full of grace and truth, and if you're born again, you, you have His grace on the inside of you. You have His ability. Uh, you, you have His anointing. You have His love. You have, his, you have the fruit of the Spirit. You've got everything that you need. And the problem is, is we lean to our own understanding or we watch people in the world do it do it their way. But uh, why don't you try God's way? And His way is a way of grace. And I'm telling you guys, I've, I've proven this. It works. <laughs> I live like this. Uh, my wife and I live like this. We live every day. We pray every day. God, make us a blessing. And it's not always easy to be a blessing. To, to bless somebody who's being difficult. And so I want to encourage you. God, I know God's speaking to some people, especially there, there's situations where uh, they're difficult in the, in the work environment. I want to encourage you to pray for that person that's been really just a, a bear to you. Uh, I, I encourage you to uh, maybe give a Starbucks card or a gift card or take them to lunch or uh, do something do something good for that person, and you watch and see, you know how God's grace will kick into gear in your life, and not only will bless that person, where, where now, 
they're not really an enemy. You know, they they actually can become a friend. Uh, you know, through your through your love, and you can demonstrate Jesus instead of trying to run from that situation. You can manifest Jesus in that situation. I, I just speak grace and peace to you today. I, I release to you the ability and the grace of God to manifest Jesus in a difficult place. Thanks so much for tuning in to Wisdom for Living. Today's teaching, A Heart Established in Grace, is available in a 10-disc CD or DVD album or on a USB flash drive containing both audio and 4K video. Go to gregmore.com and order your copy today. Discover how to unlock the hidden wisdom of God and make good decisions for your life when you read Greg's brand new book, Walking in Wisdom. In this book, you will learn practical steps to help you reap the benefits of godly wisdom as Pastor Greg shares from over 40 years of walking out biblical truths and principles. Get your copy of Greg's new book by going to gregmore.com today. If you're dealing with a difficult situation in your life, maybe it's uh, something that you need a breakthrough in, maybe a health problem, finances, maybe a relationship, uh, man, we would love to pray with you. So if, if you just email us at prayer at gregmore.com, we'd love to agree with you and speak the Word of God over your life. On our website, you'll find Greg's latest book release, free teachings, as well as many other resources. You'll be able to access his blogs, quotes of wisdom, and funnies of the week. While there, please connect with us and let us know how you or a loved one has been blessed by this ministry. We'd love to hear from you. If you've been blessed by today's teaching, we would like you to consider partnering with Greg Moore Ministries. Your partnership will help expand this broadcast around the world to give people the opportunity to grow in wisdom, Christ-likeness, and grace. Go to gregmore.com and become a partner today. Remember, you can order resources or partner with our ministry at gregmore.com or by writing to us at P.O. Box 7702, Woodland Park, Colorado, 80863. We look forward to hearing from you today. Join us again tomorrow for more Wisdom for Living. The simplest definition I can give of grace is just a heart that trusts God, where you're, you're depending on God and not yourself. And you know, I, I really believe that's true. Grace is, is simply depending on God and looking to Him and not yourself. And if you, if you begin to depend on yourself or even depending on yourself where you feel inadequate, so then now you really, now you really just expect failure. Uh, you don't expect to succeed because you know yourself too well then what happens is you're going to lose peace. That's tomorrow on Wisdom for Living.